Good morning. You catch me as I wait for my Uber to head to the uh, train station to catch a train to go to the airport. Um, the sun has yet to come up, so that'll give you an idea of just how early it is. And uh, I really can't afford to be lazy today because there's only one flight in the morning from Toronto to Ottawa these days. And if I miss that, I'm kind of screwed. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Just waiting for my train. There's about 14 minutes left. I am sitting outside of an unfortunately named but rather good coffee stall. No one's here. So I'm headed off to Ottawa for a day to get some work done, and then Montreal the day after. It's a pretty short trip, just two days. And uh, since you guys seem to like these long format vlogs, I thought I'll bring you guys along and show you what the short haul business trips are like. Is that gym open? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board the Union Pearson Express, arriving at Toronto Pearson International Airport in a speedy 25 minutes. Along the way, we'll be making two short stops at Bloor and Western stations. Mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue à bord du service Union Pearson Express. actually quite a number of people checking in. I think that's a domestic line. Huh. Well, the premium section is still open, so I'm gonna come over here. Uh, it looks like the priority lines are back open, so I'm gonna go through security and then I'll meet you guys on the other side. All right, quick correction. There are no priority lines open yet. Uh, doesn't seem like that long of a line. Should be all right. Yes, this Maple Leaf Lounge is open. I think this is the only one that's open right now. Uh, I'll go grab a quick bite or a coffee or both. Hi, good morning. You guys are open again. Yes. <laughs> good, all right, thank you. Have a good one. Well, obviously the magazines are gone. Self-serve food is gone. Hi there, good morning. Sorry, I'm not getting you in the shot. I'm just, how are you? Not too bad. Oh, okay, beautiful. Um, oh yeah, I'll have the, uh, I'll have the healthy option, please. But this is perfect, thank you so much. Um, can I get a coffee to go, please? Just a black coffee. How does he do this? How does Dennis Bunnick hold the camera while holding a mug of coffee. That is impossible. Oh, you know what, I'm going the wrong way here. Oh, sorry, I think we're going the wrong way here. So welcome to the Pearson Domestic Maple Leaf Lounge. The socially distanced version of it, at least. There's not that many people in here. I guess that's a sign that not that many people are flying. So what I've been told is that during breakfast, lunch, and dinner hours, 
know, like three hours per chunk, uh, you can order table service and they will, this thing, and they will bring you food to your table. So I'm guessing that each individual table's QR code is different because then that's how they figure out where you're sitting. So what if I just switch the tables or... Anyways, um, the showers are obviously not open. Apparently international passengers are also in here. I don't know how many international flights there are in the morning, but uh, there are not that many people in here. Cool, well, whatever. Coffee, so I'm happy. I go wash my hands after this. I just realized that my flight is now boarding, so I should probably get out of here. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, D31. Ow. Left your tail lights on. I oh, left the headlights on too. I should probably tell this person. Okay, so this is my ride for today, right here. I believe that's an Embraer ERJ175. I think these are slowly getting phased out by those guys over there. And uh, that's an A220. Actually, that's uh, the one that I took on the inaugural flight from Montreal to Calgary, if you remember that, or if you care. Anyways, I'll see you on board. Hi, good morning. Okay, this is me. I'm by myself. It's a one-two situation. And the economy is right behind me. There are four rows of business class on this plane. The window placement in this row is a little unfortunate, but whatever. Should be fun. Okay, quickly walking you through the seat. There's a, uh, there's an IFE, but it's about as responsive as a comatose sloth, so don't bother with that. There is a USB Type-A, which is kind of nice. This armrest over here doesn't come up. There's nothing in here. Although there is a drink holder, I guess. On this side is where you'll find a tray table. And uh, that's literally it. The PSU also contain adjustable air nozzles, a much needed luxury on these smaller planes, especially in the summer. And of course, there's the 2020 Special Edition Amenity Kit given to each passenger regardless of class. It contains a small bottle of water, a mask, gloves, a hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, and, as of this month, a packet of pretzels. Depending on the departure out of Toronto, the flight time to Ottawa is around just 40 minutes. Back in the day, i.e. before the apocalypse came for the airline industry, they would serve a quick breakfast on these morning flights. Even in economy class, you would get a pretty comprehensive cold meal. But these days, no such food was available. You have to bring your own, and in my case, it was the breakfast in a bag I got from the lounge. The contents inside were honestly a little underwhelming, more akin to a school lunch than anything you'd expect from a lounge. I went for the healthy option, which included this bottle of water. There's this cup which had four grapes, one egg, and a drizzle of cottage cheese, which is about just the weirdest combination of flavors ever if you put them all in your mouth at the same time. 
There's another cup with about half a dozen spoonfuls of overnight oats. This one was decent. And finally, there's a deluxe fruit salad cup, which contained three winter and two watermelons. So not only is this breakfast lean for your waistline, it's also healthy for the airline's bottom line. I would imagine that had I gone dumpster diving in a middle income neighborhood, I would have found better options. But I really shouldn't be complaining since being the fat ass that I am, I ate everything, and in doing so I try not to embarrass myself with any spillage. So by the time I was finished eating, we had already begun our approach into Ottawa. With a population of around a million people plus some cows, Ottawa is Canada's capital city, created so that the English and French have somewhere they can go to settle their differences. So in that regard, it's very similar to the seas off the coast of Trafalgar. But instead of sail and shot, they employ a much more vicious form of Canadian melee here, thinly veiled insults. Okay, so this is YOW or Ottawa International Airport. It's very quiet. So normally there are a couple international flights that come to Ottawa just because it is the capital and the airport is uh, fitted out to handle more capacity just for special events. Oh boy. Alright, I'm not gonna say anything in case I get demonetized. Where's my baggage carousel? here is really nice. Take that off for a little while. Whew. On my way into town, I got a phone call so I didn't film anything. And after having to contend with traffic, I was running a little bit late. Okay, I just dropped my bags off at the hotel. I have to run to a meeting. So we'll pick this up later. The hotel I stayed at was the Le Germain, located conveniently at about a 10 minute walk from absolutely everything. Although that is true for almost every place in downtown Ottawa, it's not a very big city center. This 4 star hotel is not a big property, but out of the 4 hotels I've stayed at in Ottawa, this one is by far the most comfortable. Okay, I'm back at the hotel, so let's do a quick room tour. And first of all, you notice that it's cleaned. So right off the bat, there is a hallway. Nice. Got your housekeeping controls, card slot for power, yada, yada, yada. Oh, this is nice. This is well lit, a little unusual. Okay, so this is the main bedroom area. Nice, nice. Mm, not much going on in terms of a bedside table, but whatever. It at least looks just as nice in real life as it does in the photos, which isn't always the case with hotels. This is kind of, uh, this is kind of surprisingly good. Nice view. I think this is a corner room. I'm not sure what it's called. Television coffee situation. That's storage. More storage. I believe that's the mini bar, but I think it's locked. Um, I'm not a big fan of this, but whatever. Sink situation, shower situation. Interesting, interesting placement. 
I'm gonna have molten brown amenities. Although you're not supposed to take those home. They're not small packages, interesting, okay. Little corridor back into the hallway. Just to give you another look. Closet. Is that a green umbrella? Oh, that is bold. I like that, I might use that later. Bathrobe, safe, slippers, you get the drill. And a water closet. Okay. Oh, there's a thermostat in here. Is that for heated floors? I don't know. Yeah, these hooks aren't very well installed. Whatever. Well, there's the uh, hotel. Uh, I believe it's like 250 or close to 300 Canadian a night. Not too bad. I think it would usually be a little bit more expensive given the COVID circumstances, it's a little bit cheaper. It's a four-star hotel on the edge of the Byward Market, which is the entertainment district of Ottawa's downtown. It's not that big. Um, last time I stayed in Ottawa, I stayed in the Andaz, which is a fantastic hotel, apart from one major flaw in that it has a, uh, a nightclub downstairs. So the entire night, the whole room was like, mts, 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 mts. and I didn't get any sleep and I ended up with a headache. So hopefully this is a little bit better. And I do believe you can see the Fairmont Hotel over there and the, uh, one of the spires of the parliament building. Cool. It is 5.23, the workday is over. All the meetings are done. I'm going over to the Byward Market to have some dinner with some friends. So this is the Byward Market, which you can kind of think of as the entertainment district of downtown Ottawa. It's famous for having been visited by Obama, I think. I don't know why else it would be famous. And, oh. It's, uh, it, it's, it's gone. Um. Okay. That was a pretty productive day, uh, but I'm incredibly knackered. So although it's only 7.30 p.m., I think I'm gonna go to bed now. Uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow morning. I'll see you guys then. I think this gets the blinds. And bliss. Good morning, it is, I believe 5.30 in the morning. Let me finish this coffee and I have a little bit of time. So let's go on a walk.
So these fancy looking buildings behind me are our parliament buildings, where the leaders of our country do politics, amongst other things, I'd imagine. And below that is the Ottawa River. It's filthy and absolutely filled with sewage, but that's hardly surprising considering the politicians are up there. Uh, what is surprising is that this river actually separates our province that we're in right now, Ontario, from Quebec. And so, so you have the Ontarians living on this side and then the French living on the other side. And that city over there is called Gatineau, uh, that is in Quebec. And fun fact, it is very popular with the younger college kids from this side of the river because the legal drinking age over there in Quebec is 18, whereas it's 19 over here. Ottawa, whether it's meant to be or not, is a very accurate miniaturization of Canada as a whole. The city strikes a careful balance between gentrification and preservation, being immaculately clean and well looked after. The metropole is also kept to a reasonable size, contrasting urban sprawl from high-rise developments. The people who live here also contribute, perhaps, to an exaggeration of the country's demographics. While the baby boomers here make comfortable livings, their millennial children have a harder time securing well-paid jobs, despite world-class educations and a safe environment to grow up in. Like my friend Jen says, not inaccurately, that the number one outdoor activity for young people here is to loiter. But joking aside, the outdoors do play a role in Ottawa's culture not unlike the rest of the country. We take recreation seriously in Canada, and while the impediment of winter is not present, every opportunity is leveraged in order to soak up the sun, the air, and the amazing lands we are lucky enough to call home. Ottawa is no different. It's got canyons, cliffs, caves, lakes, rivers, mountains, and forests all within an hour's drive, and perhaps we're not grateful enough for all of that. So then, this purpose-built capital of one million people plus some cows has become a monument in itself to the country it represents, from our triumphs to our shortcomings. It represents the best of us, and it represents all of us, no matter what language we speak, what we look like, or where we come from. It really is difficult to not have friends from a spectrum of backgrounds in this country, and of that, we're immensely proud. All in all, Ottawa isn't especially glamorous, nor is it very exciting. Most people come here, as I have, to do some paperwork and jump through some legal hoops, but every Canadian should see this place at least once in their lives, as it is a microcosmic representation of the vast lands and culture that we live in. This is breakfast. Oh, this isn't too bad. Got some pastries, smoothie, yogurt, apple, granola bar, cheese. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, times are tough. Okay, I'm gonna finish breakfast and then I have one more appointment to go to and then it's time to head to Montreal. All right, so I just got back, took a shower, and now it is time to pack and head to the airport. Don't have a whole lot of time. Just to confirm, you'd like to FaceTime Jared, is he? No, I don't want to FaceTime Jared. What the fuck? Just gonna steal the shower cap, as one does for one's girlfriend. These are hard to come by otherwise. Uh, this particular hotel has also asked that guests put their used towels and robes in this massive plastic bag to reduce the uh, chances of contaminating people with potential viruses. I like that idea. I'm, I'm happy with this idea. Okay, I think, I think that's everything packed up. I just realized that I forgot to bring change, which shouldn't be a huge issue because you can usually just ask the front desk staff to charge your credit card a little bit, like five bucks to, uh, to, to housekeeping staff. 
So we'll see if they do that here. Beautiful day today. It's a nice day, but I think we might get a thunderstorm later today. Not a whole lot of people here. I don't think there are that many flights. Actually, I don't think there are any international flights to see Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, Halifax. Interesting. Oh, nope, that's the wrong line to go into. So I left the hotel an hour before my boarding time and it took all of nine minutes to get here. So what do I do for 50 minutes? Ugh. So it just occurred to me that I never actually told you guys what I was doing here in Ottawa. Um, so in summary, I'm here because I want to start new research and I wanna use patient data. And in order to do that, I have to jump through a bunch of bureaucratic hoops and get a lot of permissions from a lot of people. So I was here getting help putting that process into motion. And now that I'm done all of that appointment paperwork stuff, I'm headed off to Montreal to do a little bit of legitimate work, which is messing with data and collecting data and talking to people about that. It's not that interesting. Um, so I'm going to Montreal to do that and then headed home to Toronto tonight. I actually have a, I actually have a pretty tight schedule in Montreal, so don't know how much of that I can vlog. We'll see. I'm supposed to fly out of here on a CRJ. I don't know what gate I'm at because, you know what, I can actually check that. That does not look like a CRJ to me out there. Yeah, apparently this is my gate, but that's not my plane, so probably figure that out, huh? Ugh. Oh god. That is tedious. Hey, it turns out I'm at gate 22, which is that way. Could I have your attention please with passenger Matthew? A lot of construction going on at the airport too, huh? Okay, well, it looks like the Aspire Lounge is closed. Let's see what it says. Doesn't say when they're gonna open again. This is the Priority Pass Lounge here. And over here is the Maple Leaf Lounge, which is also closed. Pretty sure they're not prioritizing reopening this one. Okay, let's go find our plane. So a lot of Canadian airports look the same. They're all fairly nice, but I do like the architecture here in Ottawa. There's a certain level of stoicism and business-like attitude towards how things are built here. For a medium-sized airport, they really do have a lot of just general use uh, facilities for conducting business and work and stuff. It's very thoughtful. <sighs> well, this entire half of the airport is completely empty. There's no one anywhere. I like this. I can get used to this. Oh, there's my plane over there. Look at this little guy. I think it's a CRJ 700. Yes, it is. So this little guy is gonna take me to 
Montreal, which is a, I think, I believe a 45 minute flight or a two hour drive. Mm, okay, makes sense that there aren't that many flights then. The CRJs in the Air Canada Express fleet are visibly similar to their ERJs, at least on the inside. Business class is laid out in a 1-2 format and economy in 2-2. There is an IFE, in fact every jet in the fleet has an IFE in every seat, and charging options are available for phones and laptops. Legroom is good, uh, minus the squeaky footrest. Once again, there's a drink holder on the left armrest and you can find the tray table in the right armrest. Overhead air nozzles make a return, so as far as regional jets go, this one is fitted out pretty well. On this flight, none of that really matters too much though, as we'll be spending just 17 minutes in the air. Flying time today, a quick 17 minutes in the air at a flying cruising altitude of 15,000 feet. Yeah. For your safety, we remind you that wearing a face covering has been mandated by Transport Canada and is a condition of your travel with us today. Like I said, it was a very short flight. Okay, so I'm actually in a little bit of a, I'm in a lot of a pinch right now, so I'm gonna put you away. I'll see you later. Oh. Okay, uh, just finished work. Need to go back to the airport. Holy crap, that's fucking expensive. And we are back at the airport. YUL, Montreal. They closed most of the doors to the building. So I think there are only a couple of ways to get in right now. I think you do have to line up for a temperature check just to get into the building. Hi there, bonjour. Do I need to? Okay, thank you. All right, I already had my boarding pass printed and like sent to my phone, so straight to security. Looks like Air Transat is back in business. So they have people checking in, interesting. Let's talk to the one of the check-in ladies at Air Transat. They're doing uh, Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, Toulouse in France. Ambitious, international is back with Air Transat. At the security point, they had a fancy infrared camera set up to check your temperature. The priority line was not in service, but then again, there were no lines to speak of. Wow, would you look at this pretty plane? This is, in fact, Air Transat's A321neo-LR that's going from Montreal to Toronto, but I'm not taking it. Instead, my ride is over here. Uh, hang on, let me find a better angle. Here's a better angle. Actually, it's not that great. Anyway, anyways, that's a 787-9, and that's my flight home to Toronto. Pretty. I also just realized that I forgot to take my AirPods out going through security. And uh, walking through the metal detector, these didn't set it off. So, learn something today. I can keep them on maybe in the future? I don't know. Montreal is usually a little bit busier than this, this time of day. 
but it's not that quiet. There are people out and about. There's things going on. Tons of planes parked up at the gates. Ooh, Camden Foods is open. If you're new here, Camden Food holds cult status in the aviation enthusiast community thanks to a bald guy called Scott from Sandspotter. Admittedly, I've never had a health witch before, so I was eager to give it a try. Excuse me, do you guys have health witches? What? Do you guys have a health witch? What does that mean? It's like a healthy sandwich. I think Camden Foods has this thing called a health witch. Um, do you have sandwiches? Yes, all the sandwiches. Oh, okay. I don't see a health witch. Okay, plan B. I'm gonna buy some food from the cold storage. So much to the disappointment of Sandspotter fans, Canadian Camden Food. Oh god, this is fogging up really hard. Canadian Camden Foods does not have health witches. It's a very different menu than our American counterpart. So instead I got a overpriced water and a reasonably priced packet of Japanese snacks. <sighs> Let me go wash my hands. Look after my stuff for me, okay? Our takeoff over the water provided some of the most spectacular views from the portside window, but unfortunately due to a design flaw, the stupidly loud and useless engine was in the way so I couldn't really see anything. I don't know if anyone else does this, but sometimes when I'm really really bored, I go on flight radar to see if there are any other planes around us, and then try to see if I can spot the plane out of the window. It doesn't work most of the time. Oh. Oh my. Anyways, I was decently tired and did what anyone else would do if they had a flatbed seat. I reclined... and then passed out. The flight time from Montreal to Toronto is about an hour, so depending on how you spend your time and money, it's either a worthwhile sightseeing tour, or in my case, a really, really expensive nap. Once again, I don't get paid to make these videos, nor do I pay for most of my flights. This was a work trip, so naturally it was paid for by work. And believe me, I'm very well aware of how lucky I am to be able to travel like this, this often and at this age. But sitting at the pointing end of a plane doesn't discount the fact that it was a packed two days, and while I had quite a bit of fun on the road, it was also very tiring. Now, I didn't say anything about COVID in this video because it really doesn't bother me all that much. I wear my mask, wash my hands, refrain from getting too close to people, and pretty much act like I'm working in the hospital again, so I'll get yelled at if I break scrub. Now, I'm not traveling outside of work right now, and generally I'm not too bothered with any of the restrictions. They're really nothing more than minor inconveniences for me, and I'm glad to be able to play a small part in helping the Canadian airline industry get back on its feet.
little surprised. The airport is surprisingly busy right now. It's 7 p.m. I guess the last flights are all kind of wide bodies. But yeah, it's a lot of people. It's almost like a normal amount of people for this time of day. Weird. Well, that was a pretty hectic two days. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very much looking forward to going home, having some food, and then just sleeping for 12 hours. Uh, but thanks for coming along on this trip vicariously. Oh God, I just used my own channel name. Anyways, I don't know what the point of this video was. I didn't really have a goal in mind when I started vlogging. Um, I kind of just started filming. But if you like this and you like these long format trip with me type of videos, uh, let me know and maybe I'll make more. Maybe I won't. Either way, until the next time, safe travels.